Hey everybody, welcome to Urban Meyer's Pint House. This is Letterman Row. It's 12 for 12, a celebration of the team that we've decided is the team of the decade for Ohio State. Yeah, we know what happened in 2014 with the national champions and a lot of other productive seasons after that. But without 12 and 0 in Urban Meyer's first year, uh, none of that really happened. So this is 12 for 12. It's brought to you by Buyers Auto. We're hanging out at Urban Meyer's Pint House. We have Urban Meyer right here. You guys know Tim May also with Letterman Row. C.J. Barnett, Evan Spencer, Reed Fragle, Jack Newhart, Jake Stoneburner, guys that went undefeated in 2012. And Urban, they they stuck with you through year one, and they really changed the culture of this program. Yeah, when well, we uh, we got the, I say we, because we got the Big Ten coach of the decade. It was all of us. And I go back to that story in a kind of reflecting moment. I get the call in the middle of fall about becoming a coach here. I take the job, but I hired a guy from the NCA, a retired NCA person. And I said, you need to let me know about this probation. Is there a chance we lose a bowl game? If there's a chance we lose scholarships, I need to know that because I'm probably not gonna go. Right. Because it takes too long to recover. And uh, and he came back, I talked to Gene Smith, I talked to Gordon Gee, and they said, everything's coming back, that it's not gonna happen. I take the job, we go. Uh, I even met with a team. We come back, I start putting the staff together. Two weeks later, Gene Smith comes in my office and said, or he called me, I'll never forget it. He said, you got a minute? I was like, yeah, that's not normal. I was right in the middle of recruiting and for him to do that. And he comes over and he said, uh, he looks at me, he goes, the NSA just came back with their decision. Nine scholarships gone, nine, which is usually a death nail. That's usually a tough one. And the players can't go to a bowl game next year. And I sat down. And then I start thinking, wait a minute, there's a rule that if they take the bowl game, these players can leave. And there are some good football players in that senior class. Because I studied it before I took that job. And I started thinking, my God, what do I do? And I sat down and my initial reaction is I screwed up. But my second reaction is I love Ohio State. I've been a Buckeye since I've been that big, let's go. And I called the seniors. I had all my assistants grabbing the seniors. About 30 minutes later, we had a meeting in the team room and we talked about it um, and they left they didn't know me i didn't know them and you know how many guys left none none left how many of you guys thought about leaving any yeah. uh, what's a thought i got offered or talked to but we briefly talked about it i remember it was a kind of a small group i guess but it was a really quick decision i think or on the board i think we were all Pretty pissed off about the previous year and had something to prove. And that's kind of exactly what Coach brought in mentality-wise is, you know, we got to turn this ship around. You basically just embarrassed Ohio State. We got to turn this ship around. I think we all kind of were on board with that. Did you have a, did you actually have a team meeting or, or senior type meeting about it? Or did, did you y'all all come to that decision on your own? I don't think we had a senior meeting, but it's a pretty blanket decision. Like, you're, we're pretty crazy if we go anywhere else. Uh, a lot of us, that's where we wanted to be was Ohio State, whether it was a bull band or not. Yeah. Um, and the opportunity to play with Coach it was just a whole other level. So there was really, I mean, a thought, it sounded nice, maybe go play a bowl game, but it wasn't worth giving going away our senior year from Ohio State at all. I just wanted to paint the picture before Jack goes is, we gotta remember this is two weeks after you lost the team up north. I mean, you talk Columbus, Ohio was dark, cloudy, winter. You just lost the team up north. You're going to play in a, a bowl game you guys didn't want to go play in. And and so it was it was a bad, I mean, I remember, well, first of all, being away from my family, but then thinking, I mean, this is not the Ohio State you see right now. It was, it was hurting. Jack, what went through your mind that day? Yeah, bit? well, I was just going to say, and Jake touched on it a little bit, is I think the important thing to remember is Urban Meyer didn't become Urban Meyer when he took the job at Ohio State. We grew up watching Coach in Florida, and I grew up in Toledo, Ohio, so I was aware of you know his greatness of Bowling Green. But you know, I remember talking to my dad on the phone, and he said, like, "You got an opportunity to play for Urban Meyer. You're, you're not going anywhere. Play for Urban Meyer at Ohio State." So it wasn't like he walked in the door and you know it, he became who he was. He already you know he had a better part of a decade of dominance leading up to that point. So you're not. In my mind, it was never an option. I, I committed to play for Ohio State, A. B, an opportunity to play for coach. You know, he's got the blueprint. 
hold on for dear life and good things are going to happen. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, and, and, and that was just coming off of my freshman year. So having that, right, and saying, oh, well, you know, we were that close that many times, but we were still six and seven, right? Figuring out how to win, right? And, and looking at what coach did in his past, right? Like all of us were looking up to what was the potential. And at the end of the day, we knew that we were in the perfect spot. We knew that we wanted to be around this atmosphere and give everything that we could for the university and and in the list of brothers that came before us. Um, it was just a matter of believing. And, you know, we, we <laughs> definitely did that. <clears throat> CJ, did uh, did Coach Meyer's reputation precede him too with you? I mean, about oh, yeah. what he was all about. Oh yeah, yeah, no question. I think there was one time I had an interview or something like that, you know, talking about. I'm like, dog, we're blessed. I mean, this is a shit situation right now as far as you know all these sanctions and all that kind of stuff. But we got the goat coming in, um, and you know, clearly, you know, Trussell's the man too. Uh, but you know, you know, they're both you know high in their own right. Um, but to me, man, I mean kind of like these guys said, I mean, I'm not going to be the person that's going to leave going six and seven. Right. I'm going to make sure that my, that my shit is straight when I leave. So, um, there's no, there was no question in my mind, uh, you know, wanting to leave with that bad taste in my mouth for one, losing to the team up North for two. And then all these brothers that I've, you know, have made relationships, uh, coming in with Jack, coming in with Reed, going, you know, going against, uh, Stoneburner every single, t every single day at camp. Like, my man Johnny Simon, like there's no there's no way that I'm gonna leave yeah. and I'm gonna let any of these guys down. We gonna go out and we gonna go bang out and and leave, you know, try to be on top. So what, what was that anticipation like though? Because he got named the coach the week after uh, y'all's loss to Michigan uh, or the team up north as you refer to it. Uh, and y'all go and play Florida, the team he <laughs> had coached for. It, it's kind of an odd uh, juxtaposition there, putting those two teams together, and yet he wasn't the coach yet. Uh, but did you know a storm was coming, you know, soon after the the loss to Florida? After we lost to Florida, storm we knew the storm was, was coming. Was coming. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, and then we, had a, then we had a 7 a.m. meeting or 8 a.m. meeting. <laughs> the day we got after, back, right, wasn't it? I think like eight guys missed, and they were like, okay, yeah. now the storm's yeah. coming. Right. <laughs> that was not a great way no, that to was, start. Uh, we, we thought it was a storm at first, then yeah. it was like a hurricane, yeah. Yeah. a tornado. I don't, yeah. Think, yeah. I don't think we fully storm understood doesn't do what we were getting into until – 5 a.m. came, yeah. and we're on the practice field when it's like 12 degrees outside and the ground's frozen. <laughs> I think there is when, is when we yeah. realized, yeah, 455. Oh, shit. Well, I think it was, yeah, a it, was it was really like 440. Oh, yeah, it's true. Yeah, if you came at 5, you probably won't do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I think it was a slob that was late for the meeting, right? Like, uh, first man, name yeah, we, yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> Two of them are here. It wasn't those guys. <laughs> I remember. Urban, what was the reason for that? What was the reason for that early morning after a loss in a bowl game? What, what was your point? What was the point you wanted to make? So here we are in 2020. I was talking to CJ, Officer Barnett, a minute ago. And uh, I, don't th I think they would have left. I think the newer generation, I'm not being disrespectful, oh, yeah. it's just the way life is right now. It's very easy to transfer. It's very easy. You probably would get your eligibility right away. You know, and I just, my envision of Ohio State was the best of the best of the best. I've always believed in the crucible of training where make it so hard that those, because greatness is really hard. And I used to get very upset when I hear people talk about greatness and I'm staring at them going, you have no idea how hard this is about to become. And Michael Jordan's greatest quote, I put it all over the facility. It's still there about three places. And his, you know, they just did that last dance. And his objective was to make everything hard so games were easy. That's everything I've always believed in. I wanted, I wanted these guys right here to, to look at me in the third quarter game and go, this is candy. This is my time to shine. Right. Tuesday, I want them to walk off the field being miserable. That was my plan because I, I've just done it for so long. I was a player too. And I, I just remember, I'm, you're not supposed to feel good on Tuesday. You're supposed to feel good on Saturday about noon. Well, and I remember you said pretty early on that Mickey Marotti was the most important hire you made. So you guys are talking about 5 a.m. outside. When Coach Mick comes and gets a hold of you, what do you remember about those workouts? We still, we still talk about it to this day, I think. It's just, again, I think we came in with an idea of what we were gonna be going into. <laughs> We came out with a whole different view and perspective, uh, but it also came. We came out with a chip on our shoulder. I think that's what led us into that season and do what we did. But 
Uh, those two weeks, those hell weeks, with Coach Rahadi out in the snow, there were some guys' hands freezing on the pole and bars out there. And it's just it's just something that we reference back to as a pivotal moment of our careers where you know, we're coming off a six and seven season, kind of lackadaisical. That was the first wake up moment we had, I think, as a team. We're like, oh shit, this is about to get real. And from there on, we all kind of bought in. And, uh, you know, Bear Bryant became famous uh, when he was at Texas A&M for what they call the Junction Boys, where he took, took all these guys to West Texas, you know, when he was at, and only 33 came back, you know, so to speak. And did it feel sort of like y'all were going to, through a similar kind of like survival and imp improve yourself? Is that what those uh, days were like, those months? Yeah, um, I, I would add to that and just say the fact that like, you know, we all grew much closer together as brothers and not wanting to let each other down in that in that stretch of time than we thought possible, right? I mean, you'd have asked us before coach came in, like, oh, would you get that block for Jake? Or, you know, would you double team that person with Reed? Oh, oh of course, right? But then after that fact, it was like, I, I almost got mad that, that you would ask me that because, you know, or, or just wait and see type of thing, right? Yeah. So there was a, a general shift just in, in mentality and uh, I think that carried over uh, across the entire season. But you know, it's funny, y'all went six and seven in 2011. Maybe the last time we'll say that. You know. Actually, six and six in six 2011. Six and six, Penn State didn't count. Yeah. 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 Uh, exactly. Stoney's yeah. got it right. 500. 500. Good. And the last, the last team that lost seven games at Ohio State was in 1897. You know, they went 1-7 and 1. And they didn't score in any of those seven they lost, which was really <laughs> a crappy team. You know, or maybe yeah. another word you use yeah. there. You guys were a play away in like, I think, four or five of those losses, the way I remember it. Six point to losses. Being, what? There was a couple six-point losses in yeah. there. Oh, yeah. It was it was a combination of 24 points, I think, over yeah. those last uh, four games. The biggest one I can think of was, you know, lost was all, Miami. Yeah. You know, he yeah, 24 got six. our butts kicked. <laughs> yeah. But that's Unfortunately, when, the right way in that one. That's when Nebraska. you finally found your starting yeah, quarterback, was, right? We lost yeah. to Nebraska. We were up 24-7 uh, or something. First year that they were in the Big Ten, too. Yeah. I think you just look at the, the following year, though. Yeah, we had some close games we should have won. That 12 0 season, we had some games that we won that we felt like we lost. Yeah. So it's just a shift of mindset, I think, that from those two years. Like, man, we totally should have won that game, too. Man, that game should not have been that close. And that's what Evan and I were talking about is but college football anymore is making a play when you got to make the play, you know? And uh, this the way it's always been, but really now, and that was the difference between those two teams. But Coach Meyer, what did Coach Meyer and his staff bring to the fore that gave y'all, I guess, as you look back on it now, that confidence that you were among the elite, you know, not a six and 16. They forced you in a good way to drink the Kool-Aid. Like Jack was saying, Coach Meyer has had a reputation of winning across everywhere we went. It's like, all right, now how do we buy into that? Well, they're going to flip this shit upside down, and you're going to feel it. And we felt it. We bought in. We hated it. Then we ended up 12-0, and you're like, oh, now I get it. Yeah. I get what hard, I get what greatness took and how much crap I thought we all had to go through to get to 12-0. Well, that's what it takes to get to greatness. And that's how Urban ran all of his other teams. And it finally clicks, maybe for me, a little bit later, because I only got to experience it one year, of why it was why we went six and seven, then we went twelve and zero. That twelve and zero season was the hardest season of my life, but we went undefeated. The season before might have been the easiest, but we sucked. So you kind of you get the you understand what it takes to be great. Maybe it took me a little bit longer to realize that yeah. in my thirties, um, <laughs> but it it's allowed me to see the bigger picture of why he came in and did that. Um, because I mean, twelve and zero is no joke. There's been five or six teams that have ever done that at Ohio State, and I think. Just where we at before and that eye-opening moment of this is what it takes to be great. We didn't know that in the moment. We thought it was just, man, this sucks. But then at the end, that reward at the end, you're like, okay. It's ironic that Jake's talks about, and I'm just <laughs> watching you that. So Jake Stoneburner, we're in Happy Valley. We lose that game if you don't catch that slant and take it 75 yards. Yeah. We lose yeah. the game. And so what you just said, we call it competitive excellence. Why did he make that play? Was it the lucky T-shirt? Was it the Buckeye in his pocket? Was it? Some people actually believe that. No, it's because he trained his tail off and worked his butt off and had the crucible of training. He made that. We we lose that game because we give it right back to them, and they'll go on to score and win the game. That's usually what happens in those kind of situations. He catches the ball 
outruns the entire defense, and we we walk and we get on the plane and go home as a winner. Who would steal that building block approach in you, Urban, as a coach? That's my dad. You know, that's my dad and uh, a guy named Earl Bruce. Who, but my father, I mean, it was. These guys laugh about those 5 a.m.s. That's the way I was raised. I mean, uh, a little bit, you know, it was the state of Ohio, too, that Woody Hayes would say that you can outsmart me, you can outthink me, but you'll never outwork me. And that was I drank the Kool-Aid when I was, because my dad did. And that's all I knew is, you know, don't, you don't have to get great grades. You better outwork everybody in that classroom. If not, it's one of these. Uh, same thing if you're not after, we weren't allowed to come home after school. You better be training. You better be doing. You're, you're not going to come home and watch play video games or something. That doesn't exist. So that that's where it came from. You, me, Jack, you were yeah. you were uh, laughing a little bit when we were talking about the five a.m.s and the early workouts. Like, what do you remember about those first couple months and, and spring ball and everything going on there? Well, I just remember coach got hired, and then he was kind of lurking around the facility. Nobody really knew what to expect. And Stan Drayton, that's what I was going to say earlier, Stan Drayton had worked with Coach Meyer in the past. So he kind of knew what was coming. We're out there, bull practice, lollygagging, you know, doing our thing. And we would always be like, no, it can't be that bad, you know? And then so we, we lose the bowl game. Fast forward, we lose the bowl game. Coach comes in, and we think he's going to be like, you got, you know, it's, it's going to be all right. I got you guys. He comes in. The first thing he says, I'll never forget to sit up, you know, because he was disgusted by the way we were sitting in our chairs. You know, that was that was how those were his first words as the head coach. Everybody sit up in your chairs. I mean, we were doing everything wrong down to the very minute details, which is sitting up straight, paying attention in meetings. And, um, he had to press the reset button. And, and I think the benefit we had, which we've all touched on, and I said a little bit earlier, is that we, we had seen it happen, you know, everywhere else he had been. So as hard as it was, like I said earlier, just hold on and you're going to go the right way. And you talk about, you know, Reed talked about, uh, you watched that 2012 season. It was definitely the same team as 2011. We weren't that good. It was just the things we did, we would will ourselves to victory. We, we refused to lose, whether that be you're terrified to see what coach is like <laughs> after, after <laughs> losing on Saturday or exactly. you know, it, whatever it was. And talent wise, it was definitely the same team. You go back and watch the film, it wasn't that much different. And the, whatever it was, the ball bouncing our way, it was just the things, it was the mindset. And uh, that all was traced back to those first few weeks with Coach Meyer. We were, we were so terrified of being late for that first 5 a.m. Jack made me sleep over at his apartment. We laid out all of our clothes on the ground with Gatorade. So when the alarm went off, we knew, all right. All of our clothes are set. We'll be at the facility by at least 4 a.m. and we cannot be late. And that's, I think, the tone we set, not we, but Urban set from the beginning is, it, we're here to fucking work, excuse my language. But we were scared from day one and scared in a good way of what was to come from the work. And I can just, I have a picture out, I can probably send it to Jack now, of our clothes sitting in his apartment, laid out for that 7 a.m., 5 a.m. workout. All of our clothes were folding inside out because we weren't allowed to have any Ohio State stuff. Like we had to reinvent right, ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, we and how long did that last? I think it was CJ, like three weeks. Much, much much longer. Longer. Yeah, I just, yeah, we weren't even allowed to use the facilities really. Yeah, yeah. Like it was not our place. Like we literally, when they say the reset button, like it literally was that. Reset. We we were we were broke down. Um, I think that was probably the best thing. It was because I mean you had to change the culture, and I think that's. You know, one thing that Urban uh, stressed on is you had to change the culture. And I think that, that that time that we had really did that to where it's like we, you have to earn to, to, to wear that to wear that uh, block go. You have to earn to be able to, you know, be a part of The Ohio State University. It's not something that's just given. You're going to go work your ass off and, uh, and earn your spot. Yeah, and that carried on into the spring, right? I mean, uh, you know, you referred to the wide receiver core as a clown show, I think. If I remember correctly, remember I'm that, sure. Evan? I'm sure. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Y'all, y'all all knew there was a new standard, right? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, big time. Do, I don't know. As, as you went about it, did, did you ever like think to yourself, well, maybe we don't, maybe we aren't this group yeah. that, that can do it? Go ahead. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I think internally it was a challenge, right? Is is to think about what we all could do better as men and as football players. To have a better output right because we had people depending on us coaches coaches families uh, trainers trainers families but equally as importantly cj reed jack you know jake so 
for us, it was like, what do we have to do every day? And, and unfortunately enough in that spring, I, I broke my shoulder. But um, I think that, you know, myself, Devin, Philly, all of these guys that were developing into leaders in, in that room specifically, we were, you know, just asking ourselves, hey, you know, why did you drop that ball? Why didn't you go get more catches? Why aren't you figuring out ways to learn that install better, quicker, faster? Right. So <clears throat> I know I treated it as a challenge and I know others did. Um, but I, I, again, I think that's why, you know, we all are sitting here, right? I mean, we all come from a collective mindset of just like, it doesn't matter, we're okay because we know the people around us are, are good enough. You know, we'll, we'll put our, our, our heart and soul out there and you know, we'll get it done, right? But let me show you how we're gonna do it kind of thing. So that's what we did. This is uh, 12 for 12, brought to you by Buyers Auto and Urban's Pine House. Thinking back on the uh, Letterman Road team of the decade at Ohio State. And Urban, when you look at this, you know, Tim Mays talked about uh, the you know, clown show, the spring, and you had some times where you seemed frustrated with what you had and you're probably trying to bring out that excellence. At what point did you ever think 12-0 and 0 could even be possible for this team? Well, the way the season started, um, we were not very good. We played Miami, Ohio. After the first quarter, it was 7-0 and we're <laughs> losing. And it wasn't because we fumbled. It was, we just weren't very good. And I remember having a sick feeling in my stomach that this is not a good team. And as a coach, like all of us, you start blaming people. So who do the fans and who do coaches blame? Players. And I, I would hear our staff, and there was one rule that I always had with our coaching staff that I would fire you if I ever heard a coach say that kid's not good enough. And I would start to fall in that trap. And so we beat Miami, Ohio, Miami, Ohio and then we go up. Uh, we're playing Alabama Birmingham, who later dropped football. And we're, we're maybe up by seven going to the fourth quarter, and it's awful. I'm watching the game, and it's terrible football out there. And then we played Cal Berkeley, and this is to me when it started to change. Cal Berkeley, we really shouldn't have won that game. Braxton had a couple great runs, Shazir had a couple big hits, but we were bad. We gave up big runs, remember that? Yeah. And, and Braxton scrambles, hits Devin on a long touchdown pass, we win. And I'm accepted the fact that this is going to be a really bad team. And we're going to, once the Big Ten, because Michigan State and Nebraska were coming up, both ranked. And uh, if we lose that game, I start thinking about my longevity, you know, that I'm going to be fired here pretty soon. <laughs> and so I remember talking to Mick, and I said, we need, we need to make a drastic change. John Simon, who was one of the greatest people and player, toughest guy, one of the toughest cats I've ever been around. Against Cal Berkeley, I don't know if you remember, he gets up, we give him the game ball. He can't talk. He's sobbing. And I'm a grown man in the back, 50-year-old guy watching it. Here's a 21-year-old person. Can't even talk, he's sobbing because his shoulder was that bad. He shouldn't have played the game. And he said, because I love these guys that much, I would not let you down. And I'm thinking, I went home and I stared at, I couldn't sleep all night. Because here's a 21-year-old man and I'm supposed to be the leader, I was terrible. I was blaming players, saying this guy's not good enough. In my own mind, I wouldn't say it publicly. And then finally, I had an attitude adjustment, said, yeah, we are good enough. And that's when we played Michigan State, and we had uh, I had to do something drastic, and Mick and I talked about it all week, that they missed their coach, the legend, uh, Jim Trussell, who was a dear friend of mine and these guys. We went about it differently. And we kept blaming players. Players weren't exactly feeling for the coaching staff. And it was a very impassioned speech. And that's what we did. They still do the toast before every game. I hope that stays forever. Right. And that to me was, a, that's when the whole world, that, my attitude changed. I get chills right now. I thought I had the greatest team in the world after that. And we didn't lose a game. We had two overtime. Well, I didn't say we played perfect. Yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> but after those glasses hit that day, I could see Zach Bourne became Zach Bourne. He, before that, he wasn't. Evan Spencer, star, who's this Evan Spencer kid, start becoming this monster? You know, and like I told you, Jake Burr, Jake Stoneberg. We have a tight end. Reed Frigo was a tight end that's now gets drafted by the NFL as a tackle. To me, that's when the world changed at that, in that ballroom in Michigan and East Lansing. For you guys, those two things resonated from that first month, which was John Simon in the post game, at least is what you guys said back then, and the championship water. Which one of those things wound up being like most significant from a player's perspective? The one thing that you remember more? Man, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that 
the the repetitive nature of the championship water right. definitely had its had its way into all of our minds and, and you know maybe on the front end it was like oh, okay yeah i mean we're definitely gonna drink it but then towards the end it was like holy cow right like i'm gonna wake up and set the tone from the first time i step off the elevator right and that's not to belittle john simon's uh, speech or anything that came at then afterwards uh, but i think that it's it's all one right it's it's all of these collective experiences that we had but it was like, hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm good with the couple of guys that I got around me. It doesn't matter who we're playing, right? I mean, you know, heck, we, we make light of the fact that, like, you know, we were scared to find out what practice was going to look like. But, and, you know, at the end of the day, we were like, shoot, we're 9-0 and already. Like, I don't want to lose for these guys. Like, come on, like, pick our shit up and let's figure out a way to win this thing. And we did. But, you know, it's funny, not funny, haha, but the, the, the water, et cetera, but Braxton Miller to Devin Smith down the right sideline, big long touchdown pass that, that beats Michigan State. You know, that's what I was talking about. You guys started playing with the confidence. I mean, the, the big touchdown pass that he threw to, to Devin against Cal Berkeley, or y'all get beat by Cal Berkeley, you know, probably. But, but I'm going to correct you. It won that game. We ran right behind yeah, him yeah. to run the clock out. To run the clock out. Exactly. Think about that. Exactly. But you still got to have a lead to do that. You know, my point is, y'all made plays that you didn't make the year before. Did, did, in other words, y'all felt that confidence as a I think we all went in that game. Like, we all felt it. Nobody really said it. And when Coach gave that speech, it was like the first time somebody put words to it. We all felt what we were going into that game, what we had the potential to do that game, that that stage was set. So that was just a thing. I still get goosebumps thinking about this day. But that was a pivotal moment that we all recognized, but nobody really said anything until that speech. And from there on, I think the rest of the season, we all had, we had momentum the entire way. We all knew we could win. We were at Ohio State to win. We all saw each other play. We played, we won plenty of games prior to the six and seven year. But it was almost, we got to, we almost lost track of what we were here for. And it was almost like that moment on, it was like, we're not losing. We're, we're here to win football games. It might not count for anything, but we're, we're going to win every game to make sure it does count so we're, we go down in history. And I think it got to that point after we beat Michigan State. It was like, man, we could really run the table. Yeah, we're not going to go to a whole game. But 12-0 is pretty pretty sexy to say for all things, you know, what was going on. And I think that moment on, we all – we not we weren't already bought in. We were forced to buy in. But now we under, we understood why we were buying in. It was in other words, yeah. that picture. In other words, y'all knew there was a penalty coming at the end of the year, but you could still leave your mark. Yep. If you got together. Yeah. You know, what's interesting? Yeah, well, go ahead, I mean, Jack. What are you going to do? Send John Simon out the wrong way? You know, yeah. after the guy, yeah. Yeah. his body's ruined. He's out there playing. What do you do? Not play your hardest for Zach Gordon, John Simon, guys like that? Yeah. Of course not. I mean that. We did. We weren't playing for a championship, but we were playing for those guys, which I think in all our minds was equally as important. You know, sending them out the right way was just as valuable as going on and playing in the postseason. That's, at that, I mean, I can say that now, but at that time, that's all we had. You know, watching a guy like John Simon stand up and you know give himself to the team like that. I mean, who's not going to give it their own, You know. We also didn't want to see coach after a loss either. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? What intrigued me. Because uh, Urban and I talked about this on my podcast one time uh, about that Michael Jordan uh, special was that Michael Jordan was about building everybody on the team up, being hard on them, because there's going to come a game when you've got to rely on that person probably to have that special year. You know, in Braxton, there was nobody better in the Big Ten than Braxton Miller. Purdue game, Braxton went to the hospital. Kenny Guyton goes in. Chris Fields, who – was almost a forgotten soul, right? Urban Meyer, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Chris Fields catches a touchdown pass. Jeff Herman yeah. catches the two-point conversion. Y'all win in overtime. Yeah. Stadium's Chris, empty. Huh? Everybody left. The game was over, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Braxton yeah. goes for everybody. And that catch Chris had that was, I mean, incredible. Because I don't know. Hey, away. Curling it up off the ground, <laughs> oh, yeah. like I mean, oh, yeah. and now uh, granted, Chris was. I don't know if he. I'm sure he had, had gotten a ton of plays in, but he didn't play 80, 90 plays in that game to where that he had the vibe. He he could feel the chemistry of the quarterback. He he had run a couple. He had run a couple flat routes and felt where the defense was and figured out how, where his hole was. Like you know, it was go out there and we need you now, right? Those so men, those mental reps, exactly. I think that was something that was huge that Urban uh, kind of instilled in us was, you know, because clearly you're. Every first or every second string, third string person isn't going to get the same reps as the first team. But anytime you're not practicing, anytime you're not doing a rep, you're getting a mental rep. 
um, which can be almost as important as a physical rep. And I think that Kenny Kenny Guyton, uh, pretty much, you know, that he's the 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 the, 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 the center uh, piece for that as far as um, those mental reps that he had. Chris Fields, you know, taking all those things to where when he came in, you didn't see a drop off. You didn't see a drop off. Kenny Guyton came in. He could have been a starter for any big college. You know, we had we had, we had Braxton Miller in there. Uh, but Kenny Guyton could have started for any team in America. How remarkable was Kenny Guyton in that regard? Irving? Well, the, he's the poster child to this day. I, I want to make sure that Kenny Guyton's picture stays up so we all remember. And, and, and Ryan Day agrees that he wasn't there, but that was the epitome of mental reps, the visualization, the psychological science that's true. That it's not as good as a physical rep, but it's close. And that's, that's not a coaching thing, that's science. That you visualize yourself doing that, that's called a mental rep. You're getting better, even though you're physically not doing that. And Kenny Guyton was so disciplined, because Braxton needed all the reps he could. Usually you go 4-2, four, 4-2. Two, four, two. Braxton needed all the reps. We'd give him 20 in a row. And I kept grabbing Kenny, saying, get this rep. Where are you going with the ball? Where are you going? And he got so good at it, he'd stand 10 yards behind the quarterback. And I remember Shazier had the injuries He'd go 20 yards behind the backers when he couldn't practice and do the footwork so he's getting that mental rep. But Kenny's the poster child for that. When you guys uh, think back about playing with Braxton, those that year and maybe 13 for you, Evan, like, I think about the Penn State one-yard touchdown. I know I, I did Reed, – Reed's talked about this before. Like, that, that play wasn't supposed to go his way, Reed's way. Um, but I, when I think about Braxton that year, that's what comes to mind. Like, what was it like to be, you know, playing with Braxton at the height of his powers there? It was like, it got to the point in some plays, you're like, all right, dude, are you going to break a run? Because we need to win this game. <laughs> yeah. Turn it up. Like, we need a 70 yard run here. Yeah. And, but he was the type of player that at any play would do that. And he showed that throughout his whole career. Maybe sometimes we relied on it a little too much. Uh, but being in that huddle, knowing if we're calling a QB draw, it doesn't matter where we're at. He has the potential to score, and we might need that. And so having that in your back pocket was obviously probably one of the best things. You've had. I think that play you referenced at Penn State is like to a T, Braxton. Like you just you can save a play that was designed to go Carlos inside left. <laughs> For whatever reason, got blown up, and I got caught in a bad position because I was not expecting Braxton to take it that way. But Braxton made a move on two guys, hurdled over another two guys, and. It's a touchdown of a busted play. Penn State fans still believe that you held, but you know it's not holding. Six other guys, right? yeah, yeah, six other guys had a shot at him, so I think we'll flag the holding. No such thing as pass interference either. Oh my God! If you uh, if you study the video, Penn State did a lot of holding in a lot of those yeah. games, you know, <laughs> including the block field. You watch film, you see a lot of holding yeah. all day, every day. So yeah, uh, unbelievable. What was what was y'all's big uh, heading into Michigan? What do you consider to, to be the game y'all won? Where you thought you'd blown it? We blown it? Yeah. Purdue. Oh yeah. Purdue. Yeah. Purdue. 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 No, Not no. the other overtime. I mean, because Braxton had gotten hurt, KG had came in, and the first possession wasn't the one that won the game. First possession, we maybe got our first down, but we do have pickle on the opposing sideline. Also had the the safety. North. Right, so we had two possessions. Kenny had what two minutes the, the Nor- Norwell got flagged in the end zone for yeah. a safety. Right. Oh, right. So that's what made it eight. <laughs> yeah. there were, there, it, Kenny didn't go in, and it was just a smooth sail. Yeah, no, right. There were some issues that you guys had to come back. There was a reason it came down to the end. That yeah. game was, in my, I think, in probably a lot of our minds. I'm not. I remember that safety, and I remember the pick because it got instead of intercepted right in front of me. It was game over at that point. Right. To think that we still won that, and where we went from there, I would definitely say at that moment. Versus Michigan, we did what seven or seventy-two yards in forty-nine <laughs> seconds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, no, jazz. That's <laughs> game. It was great ball. Yes. The Wisconsin game. I mean, what, what do you remember about that one? I remember was Zach Warren playing linebacker. <laughs> I was going to get to that. You know, the Indiana game. You're, you're, you're basically. I'm not going to say you're desperate, but you're trying to find some reason, some way to juice up the defense. Suddenly, you take Zach Boren over, introduce him to the defensive coaches, and it wasn't like it was instantaneous shutouts. Fifty-two to forty-nine, y'all prevail. But we're Indiana too. How how huge was that moment in the evolution of this team? So we're talking about. So we're, we go out of practice. Sabino hurt his leg against Michigan State, I believe. 
and you had uh, another linebacker, uh, Josh Perry, got hurt at Illinois, had a concussion. Storm and, Klein. Uh, Storm Klein was out, I believe. He was out. And then the other freshman from Maryland Creek, he's coaching for or uh, scouting for the uh, Patriots. Cam Williams. Cam Williams. And they're all hurt. So we're at Tuesday practice, and Luke Fickle comes over to me, and I wanted to. We weren't playing well on defense, and he comes over, and he said, "Got a problem? I don't know if we can go against each other today. We're out of backers." I go, "What do you mean?" And he pointed to the three guys on the bike, and I was like, and "I just remember Zach Bourne now has turned the corner." And I said, I'll be right back. And I walked over and Zach was stretching. I just kind of leaned up against him. And he said, hey, dude. I said, hey, man, I might need you here. He goes, coach, I'll do anything for this team. And he tur- he drank the Kool-Aid. It was over. And I said, I'm going to put you middle linebacker. <laughs> I go, Stretch and went. He goes, I'm going to play middle linebacker since my junior year in high school. I said, Zach, we'll cover you up. We'll help you. All I need is your energy and toughness, which you have all of that. You got to get those guys playing because our defense wasn't playing very good. Yeah. And uh, I went over to Luke, and Luke looks at me. I said, When we break here, I'm going to get him a red jersey or white jersey, whatever it was. And Zach's going to, he goes, Zach Bourne? I said, Yeah. <laughs> and he said, And I mean, within five minutes, he's a starting mic. Had no idea, what his, but his energy, he was headbutting everybody and, and just Zach Bourne. He's an incredible leader, a tough, tough guy, and he held everybody to a standard. and. I didn't say we're great on defense, but I, you don't have to be. Yeah. Weren't you guys worried about losing an offensive weapon like Zach Bourne? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you guys sure were yes. 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 I yeah. guess we can say that since we do Letterman Live with yeah. every week. We, <laughs> Absolutely. Guess, but that, what, when that move happens, like, what does that, what does that tell the rest of the team when a captain gives up his position in the middle of the season? It's the theme of the season, man. I, right? Yeah. I'll just say honestly, I don't recall it being like an oh shit moment. Right. It's like kind of another thing, just. Didn't really lose pace at all. We kind of just kept going from there, and it was just that was the theme. What so, do you need yeah. to do to win? Keep winning. Yeah. Keep this thing going. Defensive side. What did it mean, CJ? What you remember? <laughs> I mean, we had a we had a real guy there. Like, I mean, not saying that anybody before there wasn't, but when you when you replace, you know, no matter if he's played or not, like Coach said, I mean, he's a he's a terrific leader. He's a great guy. That energy, that toughness. That he, I mean, I. I remember our freshman year, me and Zach would go out and get in fights and everything, and that's a guy that you want to have with you in the back alley. You know, there's a few guys that you go into a dark alley with a few people, you know, who you want with you. Zach Bourne is a number one candidate for that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, there was no there was no letdown. Uh, there was no, no blinking of an eye, you know. He was ready to go, and we knew that he was going to do whatever it took to, you know, handle his deal. You guys had won, uh, what, eight in a row over Michigan until 2011? And that was the aberration, so to speak. Yeah. And everybody up there thought they'd turned the corner. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. Uh, Done my best to delete that game from my yeah. memory. Six right. inches. Just for the record, we're closing on the sideline. Six you're, inches. You're going into it in 2012. What is the impetus? I mean, is it remember? You know, remember the Alamo? Remember 2011? Is it you're going to finish off this thing you started? Uh, what, 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 just give me, each one of y'all give me a thought on what your thought was going to the Michigan game. Yeah, let's go undefeated. It would, it would be a shame to do everything we did, lose to Michigan and be 11-1. Because no one's going to ever remember 11-1, especially when you lose to Michigan. So it was like everything we did could have been for nothing if we lost that game. So also it was Michigan, which in itself is a big game. But for us seniors, it, was, it just meant that much more because we got to go out on a note that most people never get to go out on. Beat Michigan, done with your career. And that was pretty special. What do you think, Jack? I just remember sitting in the pregame meal and Coach Meyer painted this picture of these big golden doors. Like you're, it gets to be November and we're, we're mentally, physically, emotionally exhausted. We had come so far. I don't think for a lot of us there wasn't, wasn't even a question. But Coach Meyer paints this picture of there's these big golden doors and you're not, you're right in front of them. And all you have to do is just kick those doors down and you're in the promised land. And I, like, I forever have that image burned in my mind of that, like, that pregame speech. Like, you're sitting right there and all you gotta do is just kick this door down and you're you're immortal. And it's like, I get goosebumps talking about it, but it's like, that's that's what it was. And there was, there was no shot. No, I, mean, I can speak for the offensive line. There was no shot. You know, we were, 
I mean, we knew. I think we all knew we were going to do our job at a high level. And at that point, we'd come too far. It wasn't. It wasn't a question. We were going to beat them, and it was. We were going to send the seniors out the right way. Yeah, that's. I mean, can't say any better than that. I think the, the pregame speeches coach gave were always on point. I mean, the highlight reel we played before the game would always pump us up. Coach gave a phenomenal speech. We'd always go into like, every game as hyped as you can be, focused but hyped. That game in particular, though, last game, it was just kind of like, this is it. These 11 games before this don't matter. This is the defining game for the season. I remember us as an aligned group, we were all kind of joking before the game. Like, we were just ready to get out there and kick the shit out of these guys after last year. And, um, we were, I think, almost overconfident going to that game, but we, we knew that that was the game, the moment we've been waiting for this entire year, it all come down to this game. At home versus Michigan, senior day. So get to wow. breathe that rare air. Yeah, yeah. The rare air. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I was just over here talking to CJ about like, you know, I haven't heard the fact of kicking the kicking the doors open and you know being eternally immortal, right? But I know that at least for me, right? I mean, I wasn't a senior, I was a sophomore at the time, but it, it, we were so close that it wasn't. I was not going to let any of those guys go out the wrong way, right? And you know, for me, it was you know like Coach always preached that nine unit strong. Right? I can do my job better than the man across from me. And I know that the other cats around me are gonna do that in, in their respective position groups. And if we, if everybody just goes and does that, we're fine. And at that time, you know, obviously emotions, we got the rivalry. You know. For me, it's the first time I had, you know, had the chance to, to, to go back and play those guys. And I haven't had a, a, a rather deep Ohio State history, but you know, at the end of the day, it was just like, these are my brothers. And at the end of the day, the folks who don't get to proceed from this with us, like they are gonna walk away with a win. No, no questions asked. Yeah, I mean that's that 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 uh that one was for Johnny, man. Um, John Simon, I mean clearly we talked about how much he meant to our team, um, but he couldn't play that game. Uh, his knee was messed up, and um, I mean that that season was for the seniors. But that guy, I mean, he was the head of the seniors. He, you know, and we had to send him out right. Um, and I know that was kind of a thing that we had on defense is we're doing this for John. I mean, clearly with the team up north, and you know how much that game means, but. It was bigger than that. That guy, it was it was bigger than that, and um, just there was no there was no there was no option to lose. I think, in I ain't got the best hands. I even caught a pick. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, let's go you get know, the let's go get the yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. just set in stone when that happens. So. You get one in the game. But what did it mean to see him try? What did it mean to see? John? It gives me goosebumps to think about. John Simon actually wanted to play, and you have no idea. His knee was this big. He had surgery in the locker room before the game. Yeah. Without. Yeah. Green and Barry. Big killer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it, it could do nothing but inspire you, right? I mean, nothing but. I mean, at the end of the day, right? You know, it's a repeating theme here, but we never want to put ourselves as like, oh yeah, you know, we we look like warriors, or we're, you know, we're, we're we're military men. But at the end of the day, like we saw a warrior trot out on the field, and just looking at him and knowing the objective that we had on our plates in front of us, and that was win, and that was win every play, and to the best with all the effort that you could, you know, to see him walk over there, right, it was that affirmation, be like, all right, damn it, these 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 dudes are gonna get it. Was everybody like walking by, like John's got his leg up on a train table, like trying to take a look at what's going on? Like, it's we, had no, we had no it idea. It was surreal, like the whole, I mean, that was my senior class, played with John about four years, five years, that's our leader, and he can't play in the biggest game. Our one game of the year where we like really need him or really want him to be a part of. So it was, it was surreal. Not, like he's really not going to play in this game. He'd be crazy to even try to, and he wanted to. But yeah. It was like, man, he's just not going to play in this. It was real, almost couldn't believe it because uh, he would, you would thought he would play through anything. The one game you think he would never miss. He just know how injured he really was if he had to miss that game. Uh, we were just. I think we could all agree we're pretty pumped just to win that game, obviously for him, but for everyone in the involved. Yeah. How much do you guys love that it's time for war? <laughs> <laughs> I can still hear that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt. You walk, you walk in right right from the parking lot, right? <laughs> First thing, <laughs> boom, it's time for war. And it doesn't stop until you leave, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're stretching, seven on seven, team. <laughs> Uh, you're doing band stretch afterwards. I'm pretty sure it was on the entire time. Because the rivalry has always yeah. been important. There's no doubt about that. But I, I think it. You guys can vouch for it that went through it. Uh, you know, we know Jim Trestle's speech that he gave when he got hired. But Urban seemed to take it to another level of intensity 
I mean, is that fair? Did you guys notice that when he came in, how the way he treated the game? I think we needed it. I mean, I was 67, like you said before. We all were way too complacent and content where we were at. We thought we were, you know, that didn't stink, and we needed a wake-up call, and that's exactly, it was kind of a perfect storm. That's I do exactly think, though, um, Coach, you might agree that Coach Tressel, he made sure that game was the game. Yeah. And I think the coach before him did a bad job of that. I think we all understood as a group because of our prior coach, I think we could lose every game. This is the game. And yeah. growing up in Ohio, you understood that. Me being grown up in Columbus, I understood that tenfold. I think when coach came in, he just took what Tress had, took it to another level. But most of the guys who were already there, we, we were bought in on, screw that team. Yeah. That is one game we need to win because the coach prior to that, that's, that was the same emphasis. We amazing blue periods in springtime. You know, before even we thought about Michigan, we were doing Michigan periods. And I, so I think coming in as an Ohio State coach, you got to preach that because that's that's who we are. Just beat that team up. Oh, well, that's it. You guys trailed in that game, remember? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was senior year. year. Shrew Basil, yeah. 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 2012. <laughs> Shrew Basil kicks a couple <laughs> of field goals. I mean, in the second half, the defense – I don't think allowed Michigan over the 50 yard line in the second half. What, what went, what came over you guys at halftime? Shit. Ah, uh, yeah, shit. Game's yeah. almost over. You're still on All this yeah. stuff yeah. sounds I'm great. We just did it about to win. end, and we needed to score to win. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it happened. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's simple stuff. I need a birdie. Yeah. It's just one of those things where I mean, it's getting down that time. Um, now, one thing that I will, I don't know, we haven't really spoke, spoke on it, but um, no moss, no moss is something that coach really instilled in us. Um, and it's one of those things where we're going to, kind of like he said, how his father trained him. You know, you can be more talented than me, you can be smarter than me, but you're not going to outwork me. And that's something that I think that we all would agree that we probably outworked every team in college football. Um, and that showed when we got into those crunch times, when we got into those second half into the fourth quarter it's five minutes left two minutes left um i believe in that game carlos high and our amazing offensive line won that game they milked it they i think they ran down like five minutes um and that's because we we're tougher than all of them all those guys jack uh reed all those guys uh are just still going they're still going maybe not 100 percent, but they're still going more than what they're more than what the defense is doing and um i think that's something that helped the defense just because I mean, we, we were outshaped. Uh, we were just a little bit more mentally tough than them. So I think when it kind of came to that point where, you know, we got to crack down and get some shit done, I think we were able to tap into our uh, reserve. And get the, yeah, you guys, right. you guys, for one of another term, you learned how to finish again. I mean, y'all finished. Yeah. And if you look over the last many years, especially in that game, y'all have, the Buckeyes have finished, you know, and for one of another term, the, the team up north, as you call them, hasn't, you know. Coach, I was speaking free. of finish, uh, CJ, how, how tightly did you grip that interception? <laughs> is it, as you, you look back on it now, is that? Oh, you don't yeah, well, you have Thomas like, Powell, do you, yeah, still have, cast, oh, yeah. do you still have that ball? Is it a Nike oh, ball, man, I think, I, too, I right? I think also, man, but, uh, <laughs> is that one right there? Is that what that's one? Uh, no, that's, that's. All right, hey, we'll say that. We'll say that. We'll say that. But he had the interception with less than uh, five yeah, minutes dude, left. Yeah, dude, I think I even did like a little shimmy dance on there, bro. I'm usually even kill, but man, I was so happy, though, like, um, Cause it just worked out so well, man. It was it was it was a play that we had seen. I seen the I seen the seven route coming. Um, the quarterback made a terrible decision, clearly. Um, and and that bad boy just said, ah, you know, your boy caught it and everything. And, um, yeah, it was great, man. Just because, like, you know, it's when when times are like that. Um, as a competitor, as a player, you always tell yourself, I'm gonna make that play. I'm gonna make that play. Like there was never a time where I ever thought. I'm not going to make that play. I always thought in my head, like, oh, we need to play. I'm going to make that play. And I'm pretty sure every single guy also believes that. Um, and it's just when your time's up, you know, you got to execute. And um, fortunately enough, I was able to execute it. And like I said, the offense went ahead and, and won that game. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was awesome just, just to be a part of that, to be a part of that history, um, to make a play like that. And I didn't play great at all that game. Um, but that kind of quieted everything down. So I ain't mad at it. Urban to go yeah. to go twelve and zero then, and to get your first win in the rivalry, homecoming year, and all that. Like when that one was over, what did the emotions feel like of that win? You've had so many big ones in your career, but I know that one's special to you. Yeah, yeah. When John Simon could not play in that game, I knew Friday 
and I, I don't know if you guys remember, I had to speak at a pep rally, I couldn't even speak, because I kept thinking about this warrior that, you know, it was his <laughs> last year, and, and, um, and I just remember, because I've been around the game a long time, I understand momentum, and momentum in college football is, I don't think people value it enough. If we went 12-0 and won that game, I'm a smart enough player, watch what we can do recruiting. You give us two months to go recruit, I know we can go to bowl game, and I was good. <laughs> We're going to go load this bad boy up and because of what they did. And I remember making a promise to him, say, I will never, as long as I'm alive, there's two murals in that building. And I've already told that yeah. you'll see me, what it, like you, some people blocking in protests, I'll block the bulldozer from trying to, <laughs> you know, the, our nose guard. Garrett Goble? Garrett Goble. I mean, he was a warrior. He did everything we asked. And that, uh, so that, that group, I think, and I talked to Gene Smith. Gene Smith got booed at the pep rally at the, when we got introduced yeah. to the basketball game. Got yeah. booed. If this doesn't happen, Gene Smith's legacy is not, Ryan Day is not yeah. Yeah. doing what Ryan Day does. And certainly we don't hoist the championship trophy in 14 without that. It does not happen. And why did it happen? That's why. These guys, and we can never, as long as I said, as long as I'm around, we'll never forget them. What's the greatest, what did you say the greatest thing about going 1 0 is? You can go 7 0. I mean, we're in the 7 0 room here. Is it amazing as you guys, y'all are all veterans now. You've already, most of you've been to the NFL and come back, so to speak. Uh, is it amazing what run this team has been on since that season? Well, after we went 12 0, it was like, I, they're never going to lose again <laughs> because yeah. you saw what happened and what transpired. It was like, man, you get three or four years of that in that program. Good luck. Watch out. Uh, Cause we got like, for me, I got nine months in it to be able to say uh, two years, three years, those guys were going to be beasts. And you saw all those teams. That's where they won the national championships. All the first round picks you're seeing all of that develop from being in that program for three or four years. So I think after that season, it was like, watch out and you I mean you've seen it it's been watch out to the entire college football you agree with that Jack I mean what 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 did you say that changed the most yeah I mean I, Jake Jake hit the nail on the head as far as you know it, it's just about the compounding effect of, of years in that program uh, you know if you have the opportunity to be in that culture for three four five years if you survive in that program, you you have made choice but to be great. And you're going to get drafted. And you're going to play in the NFL. You're going to be a great NFL player. And that's like Jake said. That's what we've seen. Um, that being said, I don't know that I was tough enough to play three, four, five years for Coach Meyer. I'm glad I was a, a junior by the time he got there. And first of all, I don't know that I would have been recruited by him in the first place. But uh, it's just it's it's the compounding effect of the culture that Coach Meyer, Coach Marotti. It's just you don't have a choice but to buy in and be great. And uh, we, we saw it in full effect, and that's why the National Football League is filled with Buckeyes that played under these guys, and they hoisted that trophy. Unfortunately, one year, as soon as I walk out the door, they decide to do it, yeah, but right. um, that's that's it right there. You always said rare error. I feel like, like guys really bought, like, this is going to get me to that first overall pick, mm -hmm. play in the NFL five, six years, win a national championship. Because we, he preached it, and all, then we went 12, and I was like, okay, that's real. Once he's preaching, it's real. Well, I'm going to follow that. I had to graduate, but the guys who didn't are like, all right, we're gonna, why would we not buy it? And it, it proves in the pudding now, not at all the other universities, but now at ours. We went undefeated. Okay, now we can buy in because this is a, this is a real deal. And you know, six, seven years straight of that, you saw that. Yeah, you got to see for a first-hand experience, like we said before, Coach Meyer's success prior to Ohio State was obviously there. Everybody knew that. We, you didn't really understand why, what the proof of the pudding was. To go through that year and experience it and see it firsthand, we all knew right after that things were going to be successful from there on in because every guy was going to come in there and feel and see that same thing. And if you're a baller and you want to win, you want to play in the NFL, you buy in. You know it's going to suck at first. You know it's going to be a, a total shift in your lifestyle. But if your end goals are the NFL and being the next best guy up, you know it's the right place to be. I can do. I, I, I can say one thing that uh, Coach Marotti used to always say, right? You can you can bring a horse to the water and 
can't make him drink, but you can grab him by the scruff of his neck and <laughs> turn his face in there, and the water's going to get in eventually, right? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, yeah. you get a good laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it's, it. It's, it's right real. now. Yeah. Really? It's yeah. real. You can ask every one of us to a man. It's real. All right, yeah. before we get out of here on uh, 12 for 12, brought to you by Byers Auto and Urban Myers Pine, how you guys go get one memory from 2012, the only one that you get to talk about. It can all be the same, I don't know, but give us one memory that you carry with you from 2012. The football uh, season? Well, I mean, you, it can be the bogey in if you want. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you walk, you walk home from the bogey in. Don't go there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I forgot about that. That was the <laughs> <That's good. laughs> <laughs> It was a lone one. I'll save it till the end of the hey, show. I want to let y'all go. I want to let y'all go. Yeah. Like, me and I want to rest. Oh, I know. Thank you, Officer Barnett. <laughs> Thank you, Officer Barnett. <laughs> uh, Man, I still to this day, that touchdown, that 72 yarder, yeah. That's, that's something that just sits in me. Um, obviously, the whole 12 and 0, me and Jack getting in trouble, I think that changed my outlook on everything. And at the time, a negative way, overall, a probably a positive way. Uh, but my one memory is that for some reason, that touchdown is just at Penn State in that moment. I. I think coach had challenged me that week on being, I didn't play very well the week before. He kind of challenged me on playing well and to go out and do that. That was something I think about all the, a Dude, lot. Dude, out the night and you quieted the white out the night. Was, I'll never yeah, I'm right next yeah, to me in that place. Moment. There's a picture and they're all the Penn State fans are staring at me like, you asshole. Yeah. <laughs> and Evan standing right next to me and I'm out of, it's just something I'll never forget. Yeah. Obviously there's a lot of memories, but that one, it was like, it was just like, Excuse me, but F it, fuck you. Yeah, I, I'll give you my memory in a second, but I remember right after Jake caught it and broke, like you can watch the film, I was as fast as I could run just to chase him, right? If anything was gonna happen, I'm gonna try to clean it up, but I had to get there, right? So uh, definitely good thing about that. But no, my my moment, I'll give you guys a second to think, but um, I don't know, I, I definitely grew up um, in a unique Ohio State environment for sure. Um, <laughs> And uh, we weren't as successful in the in the uh, tenure that my dad was coaching in, right? So, but that was what I grew up with. It was you know we got to go play Michigan and, and we would lose, right? And then my freshman year, we lost, right? So uh, you know that for 2020 or not 2020, goodness, for 2012, it was that you know what we 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 accomplished the objective, right? And for me, there was so much personal satisfaction that came with that. But um, you know, for me, it was is getting that dub. Jack? Uh, I think for me it was probably that final series of the Michigan game that you guys referenced earlier, running the ball. You know, I get to break the huddle with Andrew Norwell, Corey Lindsley, Marcus Hall, and Reed Fragel, turn around, look at the Michigan Wolverines, know, and they know the same plays come that we just ran right at them, and they can't, they can't do anything to stop it. And I think that being the, the final game and saying the seniors out the right way, uh, and just, I don't think I've ever been more confident on a football field than that series. And I, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it like I have 10 other times talking about old stuff. But I think breaking the huddle with four of my best friends in the world and imposing my will on a bunch of Wolverines is like, I, I haven't, I, I never topped that in my football career after that. Yeah. I mean, I think the Michigan game is, is one of the more memorable ones for sure. So I won't go with that one, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. I got two though. I got one on the field, one off the field. I guess. First time sitting down with Coach Meyer, and my parents. I think that was a pretty pivotal moment in my life. Kind of a wake up moment I had. I guess with Coach Meyer, basically get your shit together moment. So that's probably my off the field get your shit together moment. It changed my life from there on for that whole season too. Uh, but on the field, I think Michigan State game for me that was a, a pivotal game. I think with Will Golson at the end. Uh, it was a, a really the first test I think I had to tackle. So. To go up there, our whole team just basically vibe around that game, really set set the tone for the rest of the year. Us as an O line group with Carlos Hyde, we kind of just wanted to just gut them, and that was my one of my favorite games of the year. CJ, uh, I'd say my favorite moment man, is just seeing Carmen, Ohio after we beat Team Thank Up you. North. Um, I think the, the state, the the the, the fans rush the field, you know, and that's you know that's cool. But uh, I think we all found each other. Uh, I remember hugging Orion Johnson uh, for a while, yeah. um, hugging Christian Bryan for a while, just kind of in glee, man, like we did it. Um, and then just, you know, wrapping your arm around your brother and, and singing you know, singing that song in victory. I think that 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 to me was the, you know, culminating moment of 
what we had just been through. Hey, Urban, before we get to yours, there's only been six teams go undefeated in Ohio State history. I'm talking about unbeaten, untied. Uh, like you said, you inherited the team that uh, tied the school record for losses the year before. Uh, and as you look at this, what is the legacy of this team? What is the foundation that this team left? Well, there's no college football program immune to a downturn. Alabama, Florida, Florida State, Miami, team up north, Penn State, USC, Oklahoma, Texas, Oklahoma, Texas all the blue bloods, which Ohio State is, Every program in history has a downturn. When Gene Smith came in my office and told me that, I thought, here we are. This is, and I don't want to be a part of it. And, uh, and so on the Michigan State, my moment is that I knew when I saw them, you know, once again, I'm not real smart, but I'm a psych guy. I, <laughs> I can read guys visual and I can, we weren't going to lose that game. Might run out of time. We were not going to, we were done losing. And there's a big difference. A loser is one that accepts it. A winner, you, sometimes it doesn't go well, but never accept it. And I knew from that moment that we weren't going to be the downturn. And as a result, you had seven wonderful years, eight now, it's because of this, because of this. Well, Ohio State avoided what every other program in college football could not. And that's this. Name a program that's never done this. You can't. I've done it. I've studied it. Yeah. In the history of the game, everyone does that except for, and it was the the, the script was written in two, after the Gator Bowl that the downturn is here, and then that we're going to take some scholarships. A lot of people in this country are really happy. Ohio State's about to get their teeth kicked in, and it didn't happen because of this. 2012 team, it was special. That's why Letterman Row named it our team of the decade, the coach of the decade. Nice enough to host us here at Pint House for a little celebration, 12 for 12. Tim May, we appreciate C.J. Barnett, Evan Spencer, Reed Fragle, Jack Newhart, Jake Stoneburner. I'm just Austin Ward. This has been brought to you by Byers Auto. I uh, hope you uh, stay with us, enjoy all the content, and enjoyed 12 for 12 on the undefeated 2012 Buckeyes. Cheers, boys. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. 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 We already finished off. Yeah. <laughs> that was good stuff. Man. All right, we're here at uh, 12 for 12, brought to you by Byers Auto and George Kaufman. So, uh, Happy to have you with us and promoting this event and sponsoring it for us. That was a pretty special season. It was incredible, and it's, it's, hearing everyone talk about it, it brought back a lot of memories that I remember from the season and things that I'd kind of forgotten. And uh, it, it was an incredible season. And some of the hearing some of those guys talk about those highlights from the person who created the highlights <laughs> was was pretty neat. So it was awesome. So at, at Buyers Auto right now, I know that there's been so many setbacks with the pandemic. People are hurting. Now that your your business is certainly not going to be immune to that, but staying strong that's always been a tradition of this this fabulous company. Thank you. The uh, absolute staying strong, and uh, you know it's our motto is take care of our employees, and our employees will take care of our customers, and then therefore take care of us. Um, so just trying to find that right fit to make sure that our our employees feel safe and confident to be there. And, uh, and that in turn make sure that our, our customers feel safe and confident to be there. Um, so it's been, uh, it's, it's definitely been a learning experience. It could be worse, but, uh, but, but I'll take what we can get and I'm pretty confident that things are going to continue to get better. And, and uh, we're open, we're not closing. It's fingers crossed and, uh, and, and we'll just go from there. You guys are still there for the community in Columbus? Absolutely. Still there for Ohio State football? Hey. <laughs> Hopefully forever. <laughs> Absolutely. George go Kaufman. local, go Bucks. There you go. George Kaufman hanging out with us here at 12 for 12 at Letterman Road. George, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We've got Letterman Live. We've got the practice report. we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buckeye Key with Zach Bourne. For sure. we got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. we got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.